I'm a parasitologist. I studied at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine many years ago and became fascinated by the biology and the endemicity of parasitic infections. They have amazing life cycles. How they have developed, I just cannot work out. Schistosomiasis infects millions of people in sub-Saharan Africa. It's caused by a worm which lives in the blood vessels of the human host. People get infected with this worm by using fresh water, swimming, fishing, agricultural activities, because the parasite lives in freshwater snails and larvae leave the snails and are capable of infecting humans going through unbroken skin. Schistosomiasis will kill. It isn't a quick killer like malaria or HIV or Ebola. Schistosomiasis kills very slowly and it causes a lot of discomfort. It causes a lot of small damage over a number of years. So people who are infected suffer from malnutrition and they are weakened to such an extent that they can then be infected with other diseases. WHO estimates the number of people who have the disease at around 200 million, of which a good proportion are children of school age. Children will hardly attend school. Even if they attended school, their performance is limited. In adults, sick people hardly work. This makes poor communities even poorer. It's affecting families, it's affecting the future generations of families where you see them suffering from these diseases that have treatments but they're just not being reached. The Schistosomiasis Control Initiative, SCI, was started in 2002 when I was fortunate enough to persuade the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to give me money to establish the project. This grant was really to provide proof of principle that mass drug administration could happen for Schistosomiasis, that governments could take the funding and deliver the drugs to the children most at need. The countries in sub-Saharan Africa were not doing anything about it. And yet the people in SCI knew that very easily the Ministries of Health and Ministries of Education could do something about it by delivering these drugs through the health centres and through the schools to the children who needed it. If we can get a treatment to young children before the damage is done, then people do not suffer as a result of the infection. SCI has provided microscopes, provides funding for training of microscopists. It trains healthy workers to manage the disease. We train teachers to distribute drugs in their schools and also to provide health education messages. We'll sample stool and urine from the children and we'll look at the number of eggs that are contained within those samples. And that gives us an idea of whether the number of worms within a child has reduced after the treatment. That tells us whether those children are actually benefiting from receiving the drug in the first place. We treat people regularly at least once each year and they have been doing this since 2003 up to today. And we are hoping that by 2020, we shall have eliminated the disease. When I started in 2002 with SCI, I could not have possibly dreamed to have reached the milestone of 100 million treatments. Since 2008, when we were awarded the Queen's Anniversary Prize, we've actually taken off and we've expanded beyond all hope and expectation. To be able to say we have won the Queen's Anniversary Prize means that SCI has really done something worthwhile and to be treating 40 million children every year now is just a fantastic achievement. It doesn't just make one child well, it makes a whole nation well. And this is thanks to the SCI prolonged treatment that has been happening in this